real nice, uh, but uh, how about your black blouse? Well, what's wrong with this? Oh, uh, nothing. No, it's real nice. It's just that uh, Jeff likes your black. <laughs> oh, but is there anything else that Jeff likes that you'd like to tell me about? <laughs> yeah, but uh, mm -hmm. that's between the two of you. <laughs> Hi. Welcome back to AO Away, the Who's the Boss podcast. I'm Tori. And I'm Kevin. And we are here to rewatch every episode of Who's the Boss before the reboot. So today, uh, I don't have any news. There's no reboot news. Um, oh, yeah. But I, we are going to discuss season one, episode nine. This episode is named Sports Buddies. It aired December 11th, 1984. And the TV Guide original description says, Angela's new beau shares Tony's interest in sports, but Angela isn't thrilled about sharing him with Tony. Mm. Yeah, that kind of only scratches the surface. Mm -hmm. It's not really, not really detailed. So this episode starts off with Mona setting up like a, a romantic setting over by the fireplace. And you wonder, like, is she setting this up for herself? Because that seems like something... Mona would do but she's got drinks out and candles and she lights fire in the fireplace and she's butchering the song I'm in the mood for love oh is that yeah I don't it's like she's like half mumbling the lyrics <laughs> I, it's just maybe I didn't look it up but I know it's not right at all well maybe they didn't want to have to pay for it so she had to sing it so badly that it wouldn't be recognizable and yeah. then they wouldn't have to pay it yeah maybe so um as she's doing this Tony comes in and she explains that what she's doing is that she's setting a romantic setting for Angela and her new boyfriend or date, Jeffrey, who will be coming home soon. Mona's trying to get Angela some action. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. Um, Very nice mother. So she, uh, so the kids are in bed already, so hopefully the walls are thick. <laughs> in fact, action does go down. So... Tony's kind of feeling bummed. He was in Brooklyn for the evening, and he's just not really connecting with his friends anymore. He's been out of Connecticut a little, I mean, been out of Brooklyn a little too long. And there's a, we have, we have an Italian name. Anita Camisi is yep. three months pregnant. Yep. And everybody was taking bets on who the father could be, and Tony's been so out of the loop that he bet on her, her husband. Yeah. <laughs> so apparently. Well, it tells you something about Anita Camisi. Yeah, apparently, Anita was I've seen a lot of cheating on her husband. Brooklyn. Yeah. Her walls are thick. So, yeah. So, as Angela walks in with her day, oh, so to make Tony feel a little better, Angela, I mean, Mona hands him one of the drinks that she's now set out for Jeffrey and Angela. Yes. So they sit down, they're talking, and as Angela comes in, Mona toasts to the baby. And Angela's like, Mother, Tony, is there something you want to tell me about? Which is right. kind of an odd like, to joke. To the baby. Yeah. Right, right. <laughs> it's kind of an odd joke. Yeah. And even Tony's like, this is your mother. I don't think he really, he really went with it. So the one thing I really noticed about Angela when she got home from this date is her dress is so shiny. Her dress is very shiny. Mm hmm and something is different about her hair, and we'll get into that a little more in the next scene. But so she introduces her date as Jeffrey. Mm -hmm. Now, for people who have watched Who's the Boss, the name Jeffrey is going to come back. Right. So remember that. This I thought this was that Jeffrey. Right. Yeah, it's kind of. it's not. So, yeah, this is not Jeffrey with a G, which is what Jeffrey ends up being called this is jeffrey with a j and is so. the other jeffrey a lawyer though too no the other jeffrey sells insurance okay i, think. I just don't know something I don't like want to that jump too far ahead yeah but yeah i don't know but, if it was supposed to be maybe the same yeah which would be odd because well you'll find out why i just thought it was odd that they used the same name but i noticed that they also did that with um so when tony makes the joke in the one episode about um trish and trash and you're close the yeah. joke i didn't like so the name there was Trish, and then like a couple episodes later, Angela's um, so college we, roommate that yeah. Tony sleeps with is named Trish. So I don't know. Maybe they just didn't have a lot of names to work with. Like, well, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> or like they had different writers, and they weren't talking about the fact that they were using the same names. What are the chances of that? I always love stuff like that. But honestly, in real life, you run into people with the same name. So maybe they were more realistic. 
than we even imagined. Sure. So, now that Angela and Jeffrey are home, Tony and Mona need to get out of there so they can get it on. <clears throat> Excuse me. And um, they hand Jeffrey and Angela the drink. So, I'm hoping that they didn't actually drink out of those drinks. Yeah, I don't remember. Now, this was before COVID, so maybe people weren't as concerned about stuff like that, but... Yeah, I thought that was funny that they just hand over the drinks that they were probably drinking out of. But before they can make their escape, Jeffrey realizes that he knows Tony. And Jeffrey is a huge sports fan, remembers from when Tony was a baseball player with the cards. Mm -hmm. Um, Remembers that he didn't even, didn't always have the best nights. No. I don't know anything about baseball. I mean, they reminisce about his home run, but he's like, hey, you were... Uh, it was whatever number for the Cardinals and blah, blah, blah. He's like, oh, yeah, you remember me. And then he says, oh, you also, and, and your batting average was 204. And he's like, oh, you remember that too? Yeah. Bad, that, 204 batting average is bad. That's bad, yeah. Yeah, but, it, it's. Uh, but I guess it was because he had hurt his shoulder and then that's what ended his career. Yeah. Which is what brought him to Angela. Yep. So Mona's excited because she's like, well, this would be great for Tony. He needs a friend. And Mm -hmm. um, Angela's really, you know, interested to see what Mona thinks of Jeffrey for her. But she's more concerned about it being a friend for Tony. Yeah. And so here they make a reference to. So Angela says, well, great. I'll be the first person in uh, Fairfield to share her housekeeper. And. Mona says, no, Diane Wilmington shares her housekeeper with her husband. She just doesn't know it. Hmm, So remember that name, because Diane Wilmington is also going to make an appearance later. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was some good continuity there. They introduced Diane Wilmington. So, yeah, and again, like, Angela's hair looks very different here. It's like, I don't know if it's because they were trying to deal with changing her hairstyle back to more natural after the date like while they were shooting the episode because they did it all in real time or not real time but you know continuously but it looks very like mullety yeah and the bangs are extra short yeah there's something like going on on the sides yeah. that looks different anyway I don't know so Angela's excitement with Tony also being friends with her boyfriend soon wears off because Tony knows, like, where he's taking her on a date. He knows that he would rather her wear black. Black, she's yeah. Like, she's all ready to go out with him in, like, this pink blouse and skirt, and he gets her to change. Because um, Jeffrey likes black. Yeah. He likes, he likes it, you in black. <laughs> he likes it when she wears her hair down. And so, Tony knows all of these facts. Right. So she's like, this is kind of annoying, actually. So Mona's taking the kids out for pizza. Tony's going to watch a baseball game at the bar. And Angela is going out with Jeffrey. No, he's going to watch a basketball game at the bar. Isn't that what I just said? You said baseball. Oh, sorry. Basketball game at the bar. Yeah, yeah. details. Yes. <laughs> I have basketball written down. I just said it wrong. Okay. <laughs> that shows how much I know about sports. So while Tony is at the bar, Angela and Jeff show up. And Jeff realizes that it's hat night at the bar. Right. Oh, but luckily... Sorry. You're right there? Yeah, making noise here. Sorry. Luckily, since Angela changed into black, she's now wearing a fully sequin black well, beret. Yeah. Fancy beret. Yes, that Jeffrey can borrow. <laughs> but, yeah. Because it's hat night. Yes. And you get two free hot dogs. Yeah, on something hat like night. that. Mm. Yeah. But didn't they just go to dinner? Yeah, I, don't I don't know. Already, I don't like Jeffrey. So. Um, Angela goes to check our service. Jeffrey's just there to Whatever check that in. Means. Uh, like, like well, yeah, answering service. That's how you used to work from home, I guess. We yeah. discussed that last gotta, time, but yeah, I know, but yeah, it's so, just funny. I know. And then Jeffrey says, oh, "Now yeah. they got to go check their service." They used to say, "I got to go powder my nose." Right, right. Back when so they didn't roughly. work and they just right. stood there and looked pretty. Right. They just went to go powder. Now they check their service. Yeah. <laughs> um, so while Angela's checking your service, a waitress comes up to Jeff and. Her name is Sally. She's played Mm -hmm. by Nova Ball. Mm. Um, Couldn't really find any credits on IMDb that we would know her from. In fact, she doesn't have a picture on IMDb. So when we were watching the episode, her the picture that was coming up is actually her from this from the episode. (laughs) Um, But it's quickly obvious that Jeff and Sally have a history, and Jeff wants to make it presently. (laughs) 
<laughs> he wants to continue this history. Yes. So he's flirting with her. They make a date for the weekend. And Tony's like, well, what are you doing? Like, your date's here. You're dating Angela. Like, why are you setting up a date with her? Jeffrey seems, or he says to Tony that he does like Angela a lot, but he's just kind of, they're not exclusive, and he's seeing other people, and Tony is worried for Angela because he knows how much she likes him, and he knows she's not really the type to date several people at a time, but Jeffrey kind of gets him to go along with it by saying that Sally will bring a friend for him, and they Mm -hmm. just, they don't really have to say anything to Angela about it. So... I mean, I, I feel Which like Tony, makes no sense, but whatever. Yeah, I mean, Tony knows he's not doing the right thing right. here from the beginning, but yep. I think he kind of doesn't want to get involved, doesn't want to have to tell Angela, and he probably wants to go out with whoever the girl is. <laughs> and he and he also doesn't want to lose Jeffrey right. as a friend. He doesn't, right? Because he he knows how it's going to end. Right. He's excited that he has a new friend. So Angela comes back, and apparently Jeff whispers something very suggestive into her ear. And <laughs> then you walk, Bizarre. I know, like, I don't, I, I mean, I guess it had to be something semi-sexual, mm-hmm. at least. It was odd. So he walks away, and then Angela tells Tony that she thinks she's falling in love with him. So, with Jeff, not Tony. Right. So, to make it even worse, like, Tony knows that this guy is dating around and is probably not that serious about her, and she's falling in love with him. So, later that night, yes, later that night, um, Jeffrey and Angela get home from their date, and Tony is purposely trying to just be in the way as much as possible to make sure that there's... No action. Right, no action going on. So, do you think that they... That was my question, too. Like, I wondered if Jeff, Jeffrey and Angela had had sex at this point, because... They got, they kind of got their nights messed up twice, but maybe... Because I feel like, unless everyone's on the same page, once you're having sex with someone, then you probably should tell them if you're dating mm. other people. I mean... True. If, if everyone's okay with that, then that's fine, but if one person is way more serious than the other, it's going to cause trouble. So, uh, Jeffrey leaves, and Angela's completely annoyed that Tony kept interrupting them, and she's getting annoyed... With the fact that they're hanging out so much. And Tony's trying to like tell her without really telling her that maybe she shouldn't get too attached to him. Yeah. But Angela turns it around and says that he's jealous. Which I thought this part was kind of mean when Tony was like, you think, wait, are you talking about me and you? Where like a couple episodes ago he was mopping sweat off his head because she got close to him. But now he's like telling her that he, he thinks it's laughable that she would think that he could ever be into her. Yeah. But that's not what she meant at all. No. She meant that he's jealous because he wants to hang out with Jeffrey. Which t- 80s Tony takes as a gay reference. Yeah. Like, yeah. Which is another like, hey, joke. What is that supposed to mean? Right. Which is another joke you'd never see on television today. I don't think, right? I don't feel like people they make no, jokes like that no, anymore. No. I don't know. Because it's almost like he's it's saying... A, he's offended that you right, might offended think he's that, gay. That you might think he's gay, which is not at all appropriate and the one part of this episode it's like angela's analyzing him telling him you know, what what he's jealous of or whatever and he basically says um he calls her he's like thank you dr brothers which is a oh, reference to yeah, dr yeah. joyce brothers okay i was who's, wondering who was a psychologist a famous psychologist back then um she had a tv show and everything okay. the dr joyce brothers show i think or something like that I think when I heard that, I was getting confused with Dr. Ruth. <laughs> no. You're right. You're that's right. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> no, Dr. Joyce Brothers. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's a reference that... It's like, thank you very much, Dr. Brothers. <laughs> <laughs> that many people are not going to get to <laughs> No, that. not at all, but I right. just found it. Yeah. I knew who it was. So, Tony gets to the bar with Jeffrey. Right, And yep. Oh, actually, Jeffrey's already there with both... With the girls. Yeah. Tony walks in. His date is... A lady named Nanette. Mm -hmm. She's played by Lana Clarkson. Couldn't really find any um, particular things that you'd be known for. Just a lot of secondary characters in the 80s and 90s. But Nanette is a hot blonde. Of course. Wearing a t-shirt that says TNT. Of course. (laughs) It's t-shirt night. You know she's wild. Right. It's t-shirt night at the bar. 
Um, and she immediately kisses Tony because he's wearing a shirt that says, kiss me, I'm Italian. Yeah. Which, could there ever have been more Tony Maselli t-shirt? No. That was probably made for him. So, I mean, I know it wasn't. I know it's a You probably but, could find it. Oh, I'm sure. Um, so, at the same time, Angela's kind of sitting home. The kids are at a movie. She's all by herself. Mona comes over. And she's like, well, what are you doing here home alone? And she's like, well, Tony's out with Jeffrey. They don't want me around. They're watching football. And Mona's like, no, we should go. Like, we should learn everything we need to know about football right now yep. using this newspaper. All right. We're going to scan the sports pages real quick. <laughs> right. And then we're going to go to this bar, and you're going to show them that you can hang out with the guys, too. So they show up at the bar, but they're wearing... So right. <laughs> They're wearing suits to begin with. It's a, it's Sunday. <laughs> I know. And they're wearing, they got all the suits on and went out to the bar. And wearing hats because Angela thought it was that you always wear a hat. It's always hat place. night. Right. <laughs> so they're wearing a hat on t shirt night and in full suits. So <laughs> I know. When Angela gets to the table, she sees that Tony and Jeffrey are actually there with two other women. And the women assume that Tony and Jeffrey are married and are like, we're out of here. Mm-hmm. But and so, okay, so when Nanette goes to leave, Tony says, no, no, Nanette. And then the audience laughs and he like had a look on his face. So I had to look this up because No, No, Nanette was a 1925 Broadway musical a, a mm. movie made in the 1930s, and then in the 1970s, it was a revival of Broadway musical. I don't remember that at all. I know. I have never heard of that. I mean, I'm not huge, but like growing up, I listened to a lot, but I don't remember that one. Yeah, we knew Broadway shows. Yeah. You know, but I didn't know that one. Yeah, so... Um, I thought that was an interesting reference that n- probably no one's going to get. Yeah. Unless everybody knows no, 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 net, and we're losers. So <laughs> Possible. <laughs> so they leave, and Angela's visibly upset, but she's trying to play it cool, like the fact that they didn't, they weren't really exclusive. And, you know, she tells um, Jeffrey, who now is, like, groveling, like, why? I mean, if she really meant that much to him, then why was he even there with the other? Like, he's trying to lay it on as if he really doesn't want to lose her. But, yeah. Um, you know, and she's just basically saying, look, you we weren't exclusive, but I just thought that we were, you know. They were more, headed that way. Right. Right. Unspoken. Right. Which, again, like, if they were having sex, then I feel like she really has a reason Every to think reason, that. Every reason, yeah. But if they weren't, I mean, she still could think that, but... You know, it, at that point, maybe they hadn't really had the talk yet as to whether or not they were exclusive. But anyway, he's just kind of asleep. So he tries to make it now. He's trying to get Tony to say that he brought the women and that Jeffrey had no idea. Right. Yes. And Angela even says to him, like, is that true, Tony? Like, that seemed a little pathetic to me. Because one, I feel like she knows Tony better than that. And two, like... I don't know. She knew that wasn't yeah. real. But he was trying to sell it. Yeah. So Tony does the right thing, and he's like, if it was anyone else but Angela, which, yeah. <laughs> good luck, everyone else. Right. Because Tony's because Tony. totally, totally picking his friends over yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> but if good it, luck. If it was anyone else but Angela, he would go along with it, but he yeah. doesn't want her to get hurt. So that's the end of Jeffrey with a J. Bye-bye, Jeffrey. Mm. So... Um, and Angela basically says at this point, like, you were trying to tell me, and, you know, they're both sad. He lost his friend. Oh, and Mona does say you lost a lover, so maybe they were having sex, or Mona just likes the word lover. Yeah. I also liked how Mona said that she wished she knew it was t-shirt night, because she looks great in a t-shirt. <laughs> of course. Oh, yeah. And so there's, like, this table of rowdy guys Oh yeah. immediately when they walk in. And then Mona's like, I'll see you guys later because I'm so one of us is getting lucky tonight and it's probably right. going to be me. And she walks over that crowd. Right. The, right. Tape, the bruisers. As right. They were They're called. only labeled as bruisers in, on, yeah. on IMDb. And didn't you recognize one of them? Yeah. One of them is um, one of the bruisers was um, Conrad, an episode of Seinfeld. 
if, with each, if you're familiar with with Seinfeld at all, it's the one where he is building um, cabinets. He's redoing Jerry's kitchen, and he ends up building the uh, underneath uh, Costanza's desk, George Costanza's desk, where he can sleep. Oh, I do remember. I don't remember the cabinets, but yeah. I do remember. Yeah. George sleeping under his desk. Yeah, he That's built that little thing for him, and Conrad was always undis- indecisive and did aggravate Jerry. Anyway. <laughs> So yeah, yeah so, I, was, I recognized him immediately. I was like, "Oh gosh, he was in Seinfeld." So then, I think Mona actually ruined her chances of getting lucky with any of those guys because then she beats them all in pool. Yes, which was hilarious. That yeah. it turns out Mona's secretly a pool shark. Right, right. And Tony's even looking at Angela like, "Did you know this?" And she's like, "Yeah." But I again, I feel like they kind of didn't really know what to do with Mona in the beginning, and they just like kept throwing things at her. Like, yeah. to put her in different situations. And one of the bruisers has his pack of cigarettes rolled up in his sleeve like it's 1950. Right. <laughs> I didn't understand that, but I didn't think you still did like, that in the 80s. It was, like, rolled up to his ear. I know. It was, it was like a very bad roll. On yeah. Yes. All right, so that's it. That They're the bruisers. Sports buddies. Sports buddies. Another um, boyfriend that we will never see again. Who's the boss around here? Me? Or my mother? Or maybe it's you! Who do you think the boss was? Um, did I? Who went first last time? You or me? I oh, think I did. But I'll go, I, no, I, I'll go first again. I don't remember. Um, I think Tony was. <gasps> me too. Okay, good. Yeah, that's who yeah, I picked. Yeah, for sure, Tony. Yeah. Because... He was trying to orchestrate the whole time. He was trying right. to... Some sort of... tell. He was trying to give... Angela, the warning signs yeah. without saying it. Right. I think he was in control because Mona, was, who knows what Mona was doing? <laughs> she was Just wandering around the episode. <laughs> Picking out t-shirts. Yeah, singing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, I agree. Like, he was the one that was really trying to get Angela not to go out with Jeffrey, trying to get Jeffrey to do the right thing. Yeah, Angela was not in control at all. Yeah, no. Even though she thought she was. Yes, always. All right, so... My rating for this episode is, I think I remembered liking it more than I did like it. And I think I like it mostly for the fact that it shows Tony kind of doing the right thing for Angela. Like, just the fact that he doesn't want her to get hurt. And yeah, he's going to, he wants friends, but I think Angela's probably his closest friend at this point. Yes. So, I gave it a six. Okay. How about you? Yeah, about six, uh, six and a half. Oh, okay. It was okay. more 6.5, but yeah. But the same thing wasn't, you know, it didn't uh, blow me away. Right. Not that yeah. any of these episodes, I guess, will, but <laughs> now, suddenly somebody dies. <laughs> well, so, uh, spoiler, so next week, Ooh. or next episode that we watch um, is the Christmas episode. It's called Requiem, and mm. I really like this episode. Is there some kind of Scrooge reference? No. Okay. No, yeah, nothing usually, like that. That's usually the old shows. There's always like oh, yeah, the yeah. ghost of Christmas. <laughs> right. Somebody learns a lesson. <laughs> yeah. They never and like Mona that. would be the ghost of Christmas past or something. And you know what I was thinking the other day, and I maybe we maybe I just don't remember, but I don't think there's ever a Halloween. Who's the boss? Like there's definitely Thanksgiving mm. and there's definitely Christmas, and there's a Valentine's Day. I remember, but like Halloween really? show. Yeah. Halloween used to be like. But, you know, especially in the 80s, like, Roseanne used to have crazy Halloween episodes. But I don't remember a Halloween episode. Was, yeah, I don't remember either. I'll have to see. But I don't remember Maybe a lot about this show. Some of these episodes are new to me. Brand new, I know. It's a great thing about being old and not remembering yeah, vaguely, anything. Anymore. Vaguely remember them, yeah. <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> All right, so you can reach us at Who's the, Bo- Who's the Boss Podcast on Instagram. Uh, send us a direct message or let us know anything that we missed or got wrong or that you want to see us discuss on future episodes. You can also go to anchor.fm slash WTB podcast. And there you can leave a voice message that we can play in a podcast, in an episode. Mm. Who is I, our... I guess we probably have a ton of those we need to yeah, rip uh, through voicemails. So, so many zero. Oh, yeah. oh, never mind. But maybe someday. So okay. we've reached we reached our audience goal though. Okay, that's good. And so good. now, twenty what is it? Twenty six. My goal was twenty seven. We 27. are past that. Oh, okay. Um. So my new goal is going to be fifty. Fifty. Yeah. Oh, I like that. I like yeah. a challenge. Yes. 
All right. Okay. Well, and at this point where we're recording, I should say, too, that we've only released four episodes. Okay. So maybe by the time you hear this, we could be at 50. Let's, oh, let's all great. cross our fingers. All right. <laughs> okay. Something to look forward to. <laughs> do you have a song for I us? I do. I do. This is, uh, this is by Casey Boyce. She's playing the Who's the Boss theme song on the piano and singing it. Nice. Yeah, that's a good one. If you like this podcast, please subscribe and tell all your friends and give you a big pat on the back.